in this lecture we talk about structures signatures and functors okay so uh, let's explain the motivation okay so normally we uh, used to define values types functions etc uh, just like this and this um, each of these definition binds names to values or types or data types or functions right but the problem is that there is no control over this this is available everywhere okay structures are a way to control this Okay, so we can put it like this. Yeah, so the result is that we now have uh, these um, these uh, things x increment and foo uh, valid inside the structure. So, for example, if you want to access the xth element, we might want to do something like this: a dot x. So then, then you can get access to x. Okay, let me change this value to 42. Whereas check what happens if I do. Z1 is 10, whereas Z is uh, Z is 42 because inside a x is defined to be 42. Whereas Outside that, x is defined to be 10. Okay, so that's how what that is the main motivation for structures. So the motivation is controlling the scope of a name. And this is the uh, main point about structures. So having seen the motivation for structures, let's now see how to control the exposure of elements from inside the structure to outside world. Okay. In particular, let's see how temporary variables or inner variables can be deployed. Okay. Signature, explicit signatures. And controlling. Okay. Let's take an example. Uh, to uh, so let me write the stru actual structure a bit below Okay, so here is the structure let me compile this so uh, if you look at this code you see that the structure a exposes a type foo a value x of type foo and a value inner of type foo so this signature tells what exactly is exposed by a suppose we do not want to uh, expose inner and we want to hide it from the user then we can actually give an explicit signature for a and control this behavior L like i will show signature I want uh, foo to be exposed, so I just write it, and I want val x to be exposed, and I write it here, and I do an end. Okay, 
So by now you see that x and foo is exposed but not inner. Okay. So uh, to see the difference, uh, let me just comment this portion again. Okay, so let's uh, look at two definitions val z1 equal to a dot x and val z2 equal to a dot inner. Okay. Now, when uh, the explicit signature was not there, both a dot x and a dot inner is visible, and hence, which is uh, shown by the signature, and hence you could access them by taking a dot x and a inner. Now, the difference is that if I explicitly give a signature then uh, the things that are not in the signature are not exposed and you can see what goes wrong now you will see that this uh, inner is not uh, visible outside and hence cannot be with explicit signature things can be hidden um, inner is hidden So let me just comment this out so that it compiles now. Okay. So yeah. So this is how we can uh, set the signature. We could, if there are multiple structures with the same kind of signature, we can define the signature as well. Uh, my sig to sig type foo uh, val x of type foo. Okay. Okay. So this signature says that any structure which has the signature has inside it a type foo and a value of type uh, foo, value x of type foo. And I could just write this as structure my sig. And it pretty well gives the same kind of situation for us. Okay, that's clear. Uh, we could, uh, with the same uh, signature, we could define another structure, B, which is also of the same signature. But here, uh, what we have is the type foo is different. Let's say string and uh, val x is hello and uh, there is some internal string. To then and say that's okay, something like this. Okay. Internal string of course is not visible because because uh, you, you cannot look at it. So for example this is well uh, z z2 is p dot x. You see that p dot full is of your dot for type okay so this is how you can control the exposure of things by explicit signatures okay the last uh, point that we wanted to, to discuss is functors so functors that's the main idea is functors are, um, are kind of uh, functions that uh, are functions uh, on structures. So if you want to create a functor, um, if you want to create a structure which depends on other structures, then we can use functors. Okay. So let's uh, look at it uh, like this. So we want to talk about this example where we want to talk about ordering on types. Okay. So we capture it by, by a signature. Odd equal to sig type t and then come back to t star p2 order where this order type tells us uh, whether the compared result is less than or uh, greater or equal okay. yeah 
so as an example of a structure of this type let's define it for integers int odd equal to struct type t uh, equal to int uh, fun compare x comma y uh, equal to if um, x less than y then uh, less else if uh, x greater than y then else, else Okay, so we define this. Yeah. So we have this in structure which uh, on integers. Okay. So as an example, let's say where uh, z equal to uh, int or dot com where comma three. You get it is less. Whereas if it is three comma two, you get more. And if it is three comma three, you get it. Okay. Now suppose I want to invert this order. Okay. And uh, sometimes, for example, there might be a functor which takes an order structure and sorts. Okay. So I want to look at an inverse inverse of an order. Okay. So functor invert or and uh, what do i need to do i need to invert the order of a given ordered structure so take as so this functor invert or takes one parameter structure which is of signature odd and returns also an odd okay uh, given by the following right what is type? Type t is just o dot t, okay. And type um, okay. And function compare x y is same as com o dot compare y comma x. So it is a reverse order, okay. So we have got this, okay. Now suppose I want to define the invert order. Uh, on int, okay. I can do something like this. In int odd equal to uh, instead of writing struct equal to something, I can call this functor invert odd on the input functor uh, structure int odd. Okay. Yeah. And now. I can let's look at this comparison. Equal to int or dot compare two comma three and then z one which is in int or dot compare two comma three. Okay, let's just check that. Or maybe let's take this two two comma three and you see in one case it gives less in the other case it gives greater okay, it is the inverted order on the other hand if you if i uh, replace this um, to with 3 comma 2 see what happens in the first ordering it to 3 comma 2 is greater Second ordering is less. And if they are equal, comma three. In both the case, it gives equal. Okay. So this is uh, how you can uh, define functors and use functors.